Hi, it's Billy from Sweetie Darling and today I'm going to show you how to make a distressed suitcase wedding cake. So I have gone for rectangles, sizes 8 by 5, 10 by 7, no, yeah, 8 by 5, 10 by 7 and 12 by 9. What did I do? I need to get a ruler, I can't remember what I did. Oh yeah. 8 by 5, 10 by 7 and 12 by 9. So I had three rectangles in two inch increments. So obviously for all my cakes I split and filled them with the relevant fillings and then added a crumb coat to each one using buttercream. I then chilled each one in the freezer until the buttercream was nice and hard then brought it back out the freezer and added another crumb coat so I had a good foundation for my fondant. Now the brief for these suitcases was for them to be distressed and it took everything that I had not to make these suitcases beautiful rectangles. Obviously, I wanted to use my Profroster and they would be perfect rectangles, but I couldn't. I looked at my Profroster, I got it out, I assembled it, I stood it on my work surface next to my cakes and I couldn't use it. Betrayal is the only way I can describe that, me being the betrayer. So instead of my Pro Froster, I used a lowly palette knife back to my roots. Shouldn't say lowly, should I? Done me all right in the past. Anyway, took my palette knife and I just applied my second crumb coat and then I could get onto my fondant. So for my cakes, I had to have two brown and one ivory. Whichever colour fondant you use, you can roll it out and then use some water, brush it over your cake and that will dissolve some of the sugar in the fondant and make it stick to the buttercream. Lay the fondant over and work your way around to lift up all the pleats. So you have to be quite patient with it, but luckily a rectangle is actually a bit easier than a square, I think, because you've got two longer sides rather than four all small sides. I know that's dependent on the size of the rectangle and the size of the square, but I have two sides that I look forward to on a rectangle and four sides that I hate on a square. So there is some logic. Once everything is on, I can then use my smoothers and just buff out any marks. Now here, I really should have just been a bit more cautious because like I said, they were distressed cases. If I had just left them a little bit, I would have had less work to do later on. Sorry if you can hear Sora in the background. I've still got work in out there. But I like to smooth stuff. I like to pinch edges. So I went on my merry way, pinching and sharpening everything. And that is how you would normally do a rectangle or a square. You want everything to be as crisp as possible. And then I had to mess it up a bit later. So I repeated this method for all three rectangles. Did you? <laughs> my shoulders crack then. I am such a cracky person. I can't stand, like, I would never make myself crack. Like, people pop fingers or, like, pop stuff in their body. I can never do that. But I sound like, mmm, what cracks? Don't know. Anyway, click all the time. So, sorry about that. So, you can repeat the process for all three rectangle cakes until you have three iced rectangles. Once the cake was iced, I went round with a ruler and indented a line around the front and the two sides of the suitcase. Now, for mine, like I said, they needed to be distressed. I had two brown ones and one ivory one, and I needed to intensify the colour. So, I used some concentrated paste colour mixed with vodka. No, not vodka, because I got told off for that once on YouTube. Told off in a nice way. Not told off, I got instructed. So it's not vodka, it is, I was gonna say white spirit, obviously it's not white spirit, but it's a, it's a white spirit called Spiritus Rectificawaini. It's very, 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 very strong and evaporates off almost immediately after you've painted stuff. So I brushed all over my cakes. I used a brown for my brown and then autumn leaf, sugar flare autumn leaf for my ivory one. So it just gave it a bit more of a warmy ivory color. To add straps to my case, I rolled out some ivory fondant and then cut uh, either side down a ruler. So I knew that they were the same width the entire way down. I cut a small section and stuck two of those to the front of the suitcase and then a much longer section and cut each end into a point and then stuck those to the top of the suitcase coming down the front of the cake and overlapping the shorter section at the front so that would be where I strapped the sort of buckle in. Now for my bottom two strips I didn't actually need them to be this long because my top two tiers are going on and those strips there just make it uneven so later on I actually cut the majority of this away but if you have to do three separate suitcases sort of go on a, a stand or I don't know just if you need to do a suitcase cake in general this is how you would do it to cover the whole thing up now I only went to the back edge of the suitcase but of course you could take them down the back as well if you need like a 360 effect around the suitcase or if you just want to do that then you can you just need to cut it a bit longer and stick it down the back I attached my strips with water to the cake and then I indented some uh, holes for buckle detail so I used a small end of a ball tool and just work that into the front of each strap four times 
And then I made a little buckle by rolling some fondant very, very thinly, cutting a section and folding it into sort of a part rectangle shape and sticking that on. And then rolled a really tiny sausage of paste and stuck it into one of the holes, coming out and folding just over the buckle bit. I then painted these with a very dark brown. Now for the leather patch corners, I just used some fondant rolled out and a circle cutter. I cut out six circles. I had four whole circles for the four top corners and then I cut two of the circles in half and just had a half circle to go on the bottom four corners and all of those I painted over with a dark brown food colour it was sugar flare woodland brown mixed again with some alcohol and brushed over so it looks like a darker leather effect I then wanted to distress my suitcase more so I wanted to distress the straps and the actual case so for that I took a dark brown dust and a Dresden tool with my dark brown dust I dusted all over the entire case and along the straps I made sure anywhere where there would be a shadow naturally so if there was an indent or the edges of the straps where they would meet the case I brushed in there with dust and in general I buffed over the whole case just to make it look a bit more oldie worldy and imperfect we don't want clean flat fondant for this we need it to have some texture and effect to it with my Dresden tool I just indented very carefully along the edges of the cake anywhere that I wanted it to look like it had been knocked and bashed around a little bit these are supposed to be old distress suitcases not pristine new ones so we need some marks in there so just use the Dresden tool for that and once all my brown dust was added I then went back in with a black dust to enhance the bits that I really wanted to give some depth to so that included the line I'd indented around the middle of the case where it would open up and the little uh, distress marks I'd put in with my Dresden tool. I did also add a buckle feature on or like a clasp on the front of the case but I had this off camera. It is literally just a rectangle of uh, paste. I indented a line a third of the way down with a ruler and then I cut out a circle, stuck that to one side of it and then indented the line down that so it could sort of look like a, I don't really know what those things are. It's just a clasp effect anyway. And then I painted that clasp with a bronze and the alcohol and stuck each of those onto the front of each case. I then wanted to dowel my bottom two cases because of course these are going to be stacked up on top of each other. This is where I decided to cut away a section of my top um, sort of luggage straps. Because they were raised above the actual cake I didn't want to have to dowel it to the height of those straps and have a gap underneath the cake. So I measured the depth of the cake that would be going on top, cut the straps to that length and took them away and then I doweled the main height of the cake so then the other cake would sit directly on top of it and there wouldn't be a gap in between the layers. For the dowels I'm using clear plastic straws I'm pushing one into the highest point of the cake cutting it and then pulling it out and cutting four more dowels or four more straws to that height. I can then push them all in evenly spaced so I normally do one in the middle and then four in a square or rectangle formation. All five dowels will be within the perimeter of the tier that's then going on top so everything's covered and it's going to be taking the weight of the tier above evenly between the five. And sadly I can't stack these cakes up now because they have to be, they're going two hours in my van tomorrow to a wedding in another county so I have to transport them separately and assemble the cake when it's there but of course I I will take photos and add them in. To make handles I rolled sausages of brown fondant, cut them to the right length and just folded two sides to them so that they, the two sides can attach to the cake and then come out so the handle is out of the cake rather than flat against it. Oh, that was useless, wasn't it? Terrible way of explaining. I then added some stitch detail with a stitch wheel and then I used a cutting wheel to add a some, just some more detail. I don't know if it needed all this stitching and these seams, but I just like the look of it. And again, I used my Dresden tool to indent some damage, some wear and tear to the handles. And then I took my same dust, so my milk chocolates, rainbow dust and my, what's the black called? Something like Black Night. Black Magic. My Black Magic rainbow dust and a tiny brush and then I went into the seams and into the the divots of the handles with those and I could then stick my bottom tier handle onto the board because that's just staying there so I just used some water to do that. The other two handles I'm going to have to leave until the cake is stacked up and then I can add those to the front of the top two tiers. The final touch for the suitcases on this cake was to add some luggage stickers that the bride and groom have chosen. So they sent me some sticker designs and I printed them out onto edible paper, cut them out and have stuck them to the suitcases which you will see in the photo. And I'm so excited for them to see 
see this cake. I literally can't wait. I've put so much into this this week and I just adore it. So that is how to make a distressed suitcase wedding cake. I hope that video has been helpful and I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget if you're baking or cake decorating this week, take some photos and use the hashtag YesDarling on Instagram. I've been very absent from Instagram this week because my bloody phone broke and had to be sent off for a pair, but I have just got it back. I know it's sad and it's first world and stuff, but I really miss having a phone having easy access to Instagram. I don't know what that says about me. And I don't know if I'm too old to be a millennial, but I feel like it's a classic millennial trait. I'm hearing that word all over the place. And I'm like, am I a millennial? Did I miss the millennial boat? I feel like I could be millennial, but they're getting a bad rap, so I don't know if I want to be a millennial. Anyway, like my phone, like my Instagram, haven't been on there, I'm back now. I'm gonna get posting, hashtag yes darling, show me what you've been baking, cause I've got some to catch up on. And I wanna be back involved. But I really hope you enjoy this video. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next week. Focus. Oh, it's so good, look at that autofocus. I have a uh, viewfinder here as well, focus. Come on, yeah! I'm gonna do anything. Okay, bye.